Hi, I'm Sebastian. For 14 years now, I'm doing stuff uh, with PHP in the beginning and for 13 years to PHP and around PHP. Um, it was a really slippery slope from starting to figure out how this PHP thing works um, to finding bugs in it and asking the right questions to the right people on how to fix these bugs um, and became a contributor and then at some point um, a professor at university um, taught us about JUnit and he knew that I was doing PHP and didn't really like Java and sorry, wrong conference maybe to, tell, to say that, but um, and he said, well, you seem to like this testing and quality approach that I just showed you with JUnit and all the other nice tools that started to come up in the Java world uh, at that point. And he said, well, would this be enough for you to make the jump to something um, like Java because you don't have these tools? I said, well, I'd rather stay with PHP and build those tools, um, even if I have to build them myself. Maybe some others um, will pick uh, up and help me over the years, and this is basically what happens, and what, what I'm going to um, talk a little bit about um, in this presentation. So I don't really want to do marketing. I'm really bad at marketing, but I have a company. Um, I've, over the last years, I've helped dozens of companies around the world, from really small startups um, to Fortune 500 companies, get started with PHP quality assurance in their projects mostly using Jenkins. Um, some of them initially wanted Bamboo or some other commercial solution. Um, I helped them with that as well, but they quickly figured out that a commercial vendor is really not um, as good as the open source community when it comes to customizations and bugs and fixing them in a timely manner. Um, and it's not really my idea of a good product when you say, hey, I found a bug um, can you please fix this because I'm not productive uh, unless this bug is fixed and this and vendors tells you hey Buy a different license and we give you the source code and you can buy, uh, fix the bug yourself. That's not how it's supposed to work um, So the one thing that I want to start with um, is a short history um, of continuous integration in the PHP world Why are we using mostly Jenkins today? so it starts very similar, I guess, um, when you compare the PHP world to the Java world, that in the beginning we were using cruise control, which I have to say was probably the worst piece of software that I ever had to work with. It crashed a lot. It needed to be restarted multiple times a day, at least for production size instances. Uh, it usually, um, ate your data for breakfast, lunch, and maybe sometimes even dinner, and was not reliable at all. Um, and it was, and it was the most, the biggest problem with it um, was that it had no concept uh, of plugins. If you wanted to change something, you had to basically download the a cruise control source code and hack in there and make the fixes that you wanted, uh, that you needed to get it to run even or add new features and then compile it and you had this one monolithic beast that you had to deal with. Totally different compared to Jenkins or, yeah. Um, so me and the PHP community started to use cruise control around early 2006 um, and it went on for a while and soon um, one company that I know uh, in Germany they started to build customizations for cruise control to make it nicer to look at and easier to work with for PHP projects. Um, they wanted to commercialize these plugins and deliver a quality platform for PHP projects or whatever they wanted to call it. That never happened because Manuel Pichler had the idea of just taking cruise control and changing a little bit of Java code here and there, adding a little bit of HTML and JavaScript uh, and XSLT style sheets and add something on top of it he called PHP under control. It ca also came with a command line tool that allowed you to just specify, I want a new project, I want a new job in my cruise control instance and it's for a PHP project and this is where my CVS or subversion repository is and I'm using PHP unit for my tests and please generate me an XML configuration file for cruise control and generate me an and build script 
to actually orchestrate all these tools. And that took a lot of, um, that lowered the barrier to entry for using cruise control a lot. But it was flawed in a way that it was still cruise control with all its crashes and nastinesses under the hood. So it really um, never really took off. And the community around it wasn't really that nice either. So I remember sometime in 2007 getting an email from someone uh, after I posted something on the cruise control mailing list. It was a private reply, not to the mailing list. So that's why it doesn't show up in the public archives, saying, you people from the PHP world, stop using our tools. These were built by Java developers for Java developers, and you are stealing them. Um, again, not my idea of open source. So I was really pleasantly surprised in more than one way uh, when I came across Hudson for the first time. Not only was it this a much better product um, and had a, um, a plugin architecture and lots of plugins around it, but also the community was a lot nicer. And then, well, the separation happened and whatever, uh, and that's why we're talking about Jenkins today. Um, still, very happy with it. Um, had lot, made lots of experience over the last couple of years in trying to figure out how to make the best use of it uh, in the PHP setting. And it's so much easier when you compare it to other solutions because there's a plugin um, for almost everything and it doesn't really matter to the community if you're using it for a Java project or for a Ruby project or for a Python project or for a PHP project. They don't ju they just care about the developers and not about one specific programming language stack. Sure, there's a focus on Java because it's built in Java and the initial target audience was just Java, but I, w I never felt alienated in the community. So now you know a little bit about that guy standing on the podium right here, hopefully, maybe, maybe not, but I don't have the first clue um, about you guys in this room because this is very strange setting for me to present on continuous integration in the PHP environment. I usually have the reverse where I talk to PHP developers that they want to get started with Jenkins um, and tell them all about these tools that they have at their disposal and how to just orchestrate and integrate them with Jenkins. So at least I think I'm now in a situation where I'm talking to people or discuss with people that know what continuous integration is, know what Jenkins is and what it does, um, but maybe have not so much of a PHP background. So it would be really helpful um, for me if at least some of you could introduce themselves or explain why they are here. And yes, just sitting here and having water or whatever and space to work and network um, is a valid answer, yes. So let's see if the few slides that I've prepared actually work out for this. So, so basically what I prepared slides before I go into more hands-on slash demo uh, kind of way of presenting um, is just to give an overview of what kind of tools exist in the PHP world um, and how you can listen to them uh, in Jenkins um, through various plugins. So first there's PHP unit, this is how it all started. Um, and of course, I'm a little bit biased there because I wrote PHP unit and take everything I say with a grain of salt. There's plenty of other testing frameworks, but this is the one that's most commonly used. And it turns out that I, through laziness, 11, 12 years ago or so, made the right decision by saying, okay, I somehow may at some point in the future want to do something useful with data that I collect when running the tests, so I probably should write a log file. And I was too lazy to figure out my own log file format, so I looked at what JUnit was writing, and so that's why PHP unit just generates JUnit XML, which is why it was so easy for Cruise Control to immediately do something um, with these log files. It just didn't care about that this log file was not generated by JUnit but by another tool that just wrote the same XML. Um, and all the other tools that I'm going to going through um, for quality assurance things in the PHP world took, built upon the same idea, took the idea 
and also looked at other tools um, from the Java world mostly with regard to the way that they um, lock their results. A um, little bit later, a couple of years later, I added support for code coverage in PHP unit once we had the low level functionality for that in the PHP interpreter that only exists because um, I bugged the right guy about, hey, I need this for PHP unit. Um, this would be really awesome if we had that. So once again, I needed to figure out an XML format and I looked at Clover because that at least to me as an outsider with regard to the Java community, felt like a de facto standard in the Java world. So when working with Jenkins for PHP projects, there's a couple of plugins that you need. Um, it's the XUnit plugin um, to interact with the log files um, that, G uh, that PHP unit generates. It's not 100% compatible as I figured out over the years um, with JUnit XML log files. So you need this XUnit um, plugin that reads the PHP unit XML test result log files. Um, and the reason why you need that is because PHP unit uses nested test suite elements um, because you can have nested test suites. Um, and for a very long time, we were using the Clover plugin for Jenkins to get the code coverage statistics into Jenkins. Um, but there was something that always bugged me about that and bugged others about that because it expected not only a Clover XML log file as input, but also it somehow expected the actual Clover product to be installed and have a license key and it would print warnings or errors when it wouldn't find that. And of course you don't have a Java code coverage tool installed um, when you're working in a PHP environment. Um, and you would have, and this is what, what annoyed me at least the most, um, was there was a button or a link um, in the build, on the builds page uh, in Jenkins that said, hey, click here for more detailed Clover information, and it would always, would always lead to a 404 HTTP error because you didn't have Clover installed. So I ignored that for a very long time, and then at some point, um, somebody just wrote a plugin called Clover PHP, which is basically a fork or a rewrite of the Clover plugin that just does, that just uh, reads the XML log file and does useful stuff with that and doesn't interact um, with the Clover tool. PHP Code Sniffer is probably the oldest um, static code analysis tool that we have in the PHP world. Um, it was written originally just um, to figure out whether or not to, de to detect violations with regard to coding standards, formatting, um, opening curly braces, same line, next line, tabs or spaces, uh, and what have you. But over the years, it has grown and now comes out of the box with a couple of hundred sniffs that sniff at your code and tell you where something is broken. So it can detect potential performance problems, potential uh, bugs, and so on. And just as a trivia side note, it's the only code analysis tool for PHP that is uh, used, that is commonly used, that is not written by a German. Um, I get this question at PHP conferences around the world a lot. Why is it always the Germans that build these tools that tell me that my code is broken? Uh, I have no answer to that, but at least there's PHP Code Sniffer, which is uh, the outlier that says, hey, it's not just us um, that care about quality, um, it's also the Australians. So PHP Code Sniffer generates check style XML, check style, similar tool in the Java world, you probably all know that. Um, so that's why we use the check style plugin or the violations plugin um, because they just natively do know what to do with these log files. They don't care at all about that these log files are not um, written by the original tool. Next uh, static analysis tool um, that we use is PHP copy paste detector or PHP CPD for short and on the command line and it just does what the, what the name suggests. It looks for duplicate code. Um, it produces log file output in PMD CPD XML. So 
for instance, Jenkins uh, dry plug in knows exactly what to do with that and how to visualize that and how to um, keep track of trends and so on. PHP depend. Um, the name may already give it away. It's a port of JDepend or inspired by JDepend. Collects and calculates raw code cover, uh, raw software metrics information about your PHP project and stores the result in a JDepend XML file and in a custom XML log file that you can do, uh, use for some more data mining on your software. Uh, and it also does software visualizations like a software overview pyramid uh, and so on. And of course, we use a JDepend plugin for that. Um, again, doesn't care about the XML log file not coming from JDepend. We have PHPMD, PHP Mess Detector, um, which sits basically on top of PHP Depend, allows you to define rules that operate on the raw data collected by PHP Depend. And when one of those rules is violated, you get a violation report. And it's inspired by PMD, the project mess detector, or program of mass destruction, or pretty much done, or any day now, maybe the PMD project decides on what the acronym actually stands for. Last time I looked at the website, there were at least 10 different suggestions what PMD was supposed to stand for. Most commonly used one is probably project mess detector. Um, and naturally, PHPMD just writes PMD XML log files as a result which allows us to use the Jenkins PMD plugin to keep track of trends um, with regards to the mess that we carry around in our PHP project. Um, it may be a bit overkill that I, in my instances, use both a check style plugin and a violations plugin, and I may stop using a check style plugin at some point, but at least in the beginning, I found it interesting to have two different views on all of this data. But um, since the violations tool or the violation, violations um, plugin supports all of these um, different log file formats that come out of the um, PHP quality assurance tools, it's a really nice central place to look at the trends with regard to the findings from the static analysis tool. So that's really useful to have. And in the PHP project, we use it um, to do the useful stuff with PHP code sniffer, PHP copy paste detector, and PHP mess detector. There are a couple of tools um, that I left out. For instance, for instance, there's also PHP DCD, the PHP dead code detector. Um, but it's not, yeah, ready for production or anything. It was an experiment I did a couple of years ago on a flight home from Brazil. Uh, it basically works as far as its unit tests goes, um, but every time I used it on a production code base, um, it failed, um, which is not surprising given the highly dynamic language, uh, highly dynamic nature of the PHP programming language, where you can have variable variables and variable method calls and so on. So, as and that's a limitation of most of these static analysis tools. The more dynamic features you use of the language. Um, the more problems you get um, with the setting analysis tools. Um, I mentioned earlier that there's a company, or that there was a company, um, that wanted to do a commercial support offering around cruise control a couple of years ago, um, geared towards PHP um, quality assurance and continuous integration. And they basically gave up on that idea once PHP under control came out but the central piece of what they did back then uh, has been open sourced since under the name PHP Code Browser. And this is just a small PHP tool that takes all the XML log files from all the other tools as input plus the source code and generates a static HTML output where you can browse through your code base and get highlighted sections in the code with annotations like PHP Code Sniffer found something here. Uh, PHP Unit says that this method has less than 80% code coverage and so on. So that's a nice integrated way of looking at your code and um, doing stuff. There's also an Eclipse plugin from the same developers of PHP, uh, PHP Code Browser that integrates 
um, all this information that's gathered by your Jenkins into Eclipse and shows while you're editing, while you're working on the code, hey, PHP code sniffer found something here, um, please fix that. A generic plugin that we use a lot is the HTML publisher for, gen uh, for publishing API documentation, for instance, or the output of PHP code browser or PHP units code coverage report. PHP LOC, really small tool that initially just did what the name suggests, just count the lines of code in your project, but over the years grew and grew and grew, and now also counts other things like how many classes do I have and are they abstract or, or not, or how many methods do I have and are they evil, as in static or not, and this tool grow, grew over the years because um, I tend to do a lot of code reviews of code that I have not the first clue about, and the first thing that I want to know is how much code do I have and how is it structured? And by looking at um, how many of, um, um, how much or to what extent new fe newer features of the PHP language are used, I can make a guess of how old the code base is and how new concepts are used and so on. So that I was too lazy to build separate tools for that, so I put all of that in PHP LOC. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that you can take this data and provide it to the plot, uh, the plot plugin for Jenkins and get metrics collected over time. Like, um, this can be really interesting um, if you are refactoring a legacy PHP 4 code base um, with lots of duplicated code, uh, with no object-oriented features uh, being used to more modern PHP 5. Uh, code, so as you refactor that, the number of duplicate code goes down, but also the number of lines of code goes down, and the number of classes goes up, and so on. And because I'm really, really lazy, and don't want to do the same things over and over and over again, uh, at some point I just said, okay, I don't want to go through the same steps every time I'm configuring a new Jenkins job for a PHP project. Um, so I did what I usually do when I found a problem like that, I create a new open source project. So I created Jenkins PHP, jenkins-php.org, um, which is first and foremost uh, a template configuration XML file for Jenkins for a PHP job, um, but also gives you a pretty good foundation um, of an Apache and build script for your PHP project that orchestrates all these different tools that I just mentioned uh, and invokes them with the right arguments and puts all of the build artifacts, all the log files, in a standard um, stru directory structure so the Jenkins template can pick them up and you don't, or you almost have no configuration to do, um, as we'll see in just a minute. So this slide is probably um, superfluous because you probably all know how to install Jenkins. Uh, usually my audiences don't know. Um, so for the demo, I usually just download um, the latest um, archive and just set the environment variable and run it. And then I install a couple of plugins. I'm, I guess by now I've said it uh, quite often, I'm lazy so I don't like to use the web user interface to install all the plugins that I need. I just use the command line interface. Um, just tell it all the plugins that I need. Um, and there are very few things that I don't like about Jenkins. And one of them is that it comes out of the box with support for CVS and Subversion, but not for something that is from this millennium. Um, so I always have to install Git manually, um, and I install the Green Balls plugin because blue is not really associated with success for me. So it's weird how, from when you grow up and look at a traffic light for the first time, and you are told you only go when you are green, um, how that programming sticks with you, and you cannot just easily adapt to something else. Um, so that was just an overview of all the tools um, that there are and what kind of plugins we use in Jenkins um, to pull the information in and get them in our Jenkins setup. 
So any questions so far? The question was, do I use sonar? Um, not yet. Um, I tried, well, uh, roll back. Every couple of months I try to use it for a PHP project. Um, so far it's not as easy to set up as I would like it to be. It's gotten a lot better now that the dependency on Maven is gone and it actually can work with Ant-based builds and it doesn't run, it does not want to run the tools twice uh, and so on, um, but it's not really nice yet. Um, I can get it to work, um, but it feels like I need to do too much work to get it uh, to work. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I don't install um, a server container or, or whatever because usually Jenkins, uh, in the environment that I work in, Jenkins is the only piece of Java um, that's there um, or at least available to the team that I'm working with. So there's no need um, for a full-fledged uh, server container. So out of the box it just works great. What we usually do is put um, and another HTTP server in front of it, like Nginx or LightTTPD, um, just to have some proxying going on and some mechanism for HTTP authentication, for instance, that the admins are more uh, familiar with than having to learn something new. So this is the website that I mentioned earlier, Jenkins-php.org. Um, yeah, you can get a template for Jenkins jobs for PHP projects. Um, it basically lists all the plugins that I mentioned, uh, mentions how to install them, tells you how to install the required PHP tools, which is really simple. If you have the same PHP environment, you just do pair install pair.phpqatools.org slash phpqatools. This is just a meta package that pulls in all the dependencies, uh, all the uh, required PHP tools, and like PHP unit, PHP code sniffer, PHP depend, PHP copy paste detector, and all, all of them. And you're good to go in a minute or so. Okay. So this is a template project that I mentioned earlier. So when I create a new job, like I have um, a project, an example project that I use in my PHP unit training called bank account. It's really boring, but it shows a lot of different things that you can do um, with PHP unit uh, with regard to testing the various layers of your application from really small pure unit tests over integration tests all the way to edge to edge and system level uh, end to end tests. And then you just copy this from the PHP template And the only thing left to do after that um, is enabling the build and configuring the version control system. And just for completeness, specify the master and that should be it. And of course we need to configure the build trigger Usually, no, I don't want to do that, but for demo purposes, yes, this is exactly what I want every minute. And that's it. And now something useful should happen. At some point. So. Yeah. Why do I wait? Because when I started to use Jenkins, the build now button didn't work. And that's just, maybe I think it was only in the one release and a week later it was fixed, but this is something that just stuck with me. 
So I usually just wait the minute and in the meantime do something else. That's just me. Okay. Oh, okay. So instead of invoking the command line install thingy for all in, um, plugins individually, I can do it in one command. I didn't know that. Is that new? For 100 years? Okay, for 100 weeks. So 100 weeks? Okay. I think I looked, at, I tried that one in the beginning and it didn't work. And then after that it was implemented. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll fix that. Because that's something that nagged me. Yeah. Good. Okay, now we, we have a build. Um, green ball and the sun is shining. Although the sun set and the oracle came up and whatever, but, but it's still sunny. Um, And this is what the project overview looks like um, for a PHP project if you use this template. You get the code coverage report, the API documentation, the PHP code browser output, and test results and everything. And of course, this is really boring because it's the first build. There's all these charts that need two data points at least to do something nice um, are not there. And it's boring because there are no violations. There's 100% code coverage and everything. Um, but if you've never seen it before, this is what the code coverage report looks like. It comes out of PHP unit. Um, This is what the code browser looks like. So you can browse through your code and it tells you where it will found a violation and so on. And normal output from the JDPen plugin doesn't care about the, the fact that it's not a Java project, not the real JDPen was run but pdpen that generated a jdpen log file. Same with the violations and the test result. I think I have this here. It has some more charts, but um, some more data points, so you actually see the charts. Um, yeah. So if you go to the console output, we see what actually happened. We, it's just a plain AND build uh, that happens behind the scenes. Uh, of course, you can use everything, every other build tool that is supported by, by Jenkins. It's just my personal preference that I like AND or AND is good enough for me, it just works. Um, it works everywhere. Yes, somebody ported Apache AND um, to PHP, the Fing project, which is also natively supported by Jenkins as a Fing plugin that you can install. Um, but I don't see the point in porting such a tool from Java to PHP just to have it in PHP. Um, I also don't understand some people that implement continuous integration service in PHP because they don't want to use um, something that is not written in, in PHP. I cannot understand that. I'm much more pragmatic uh, than that. So we invoke a couple of tools, the PHP Autoload Builder, PHP AB, um, which is really the tool of choice to do your auto-loading, your class loading in PHP these days. Uh, we prepare the build by creating a couple of um, directories. Uh, we do a lint check. No point in trying to run the unit tests if there's a syntax error. You don't need something like that in, in Java because the Java compiler takes care of that. In an interpreted language, it's uh, really useful to have the lint check. And then 
all the tools that I mentioned, PHP LLC, PHP Depend, PHP Mass Detector, PHP Code Sniffer, PHP Copy Paste Detector, PHP Docs uh, for API documentation, PHP Unit to run all unit tests, and then in the end, PHP Code Browser that pulls in all the XML log files and integrates them, interlaces them with the source code to give us a uni unified browsing experience. And then the build is done and Jenkins starts uh, to do its thing. It collects all of the information, publishes the results, uh, and finishes. Any questions? What's the tool that I use for the lint check, the syntax check? I just use the PHP interpreter. PHP L. It's the only thing that you need. There's no other lint checker that I know for PHP. It's, it's built into the interpreter. It's really easy to use. Um, so in the end script, you just use the apply, the apply task instead of the exec task. Uh, apply takes as an argument a file set. So you can say, okay, every, every, um, every file that ends in .php in my source directory, please give that file, the path to that file as argument to php-l, and it will do that. Unfortunately, php-l can only accept one file at a time, so you need a new PHP interpreter um, for each file that you check, which is really, really slow. But if you use the modified option here, um, and will only run the lint check on all files the first time it's run, and after that it will only run it on the files that have changed in the last time you invoke the build. It keeps track of which files have changed for you. That's one of the advanced uh, file set features of AND that you can use. And with all the other tools, it's just like invoke it um, with sane defaults and write the XML log files or other build artifacts to a standardized location so that the Jenkins template can pick up on that. That makes it really, really easy to use and still gives you lots of flexibility to customize it um, to your needs. So the question is, um, in a typical PHP project, you not only have PHP, but also JavaScript for the front end. And how, how do I cope with that? So there are unit testing tools for JavaScript that you can use. Basically, every major framework has their own that they advocate. Um, there are a couple of standard ones, like the one from YUI is pretty popular. There's JS unit that's somewhat popular. Um, PHP code sniffer, most, uh, a, a lot of the sniffs of PHP code sniffer can also be applied to JavaScript code. So there's a um, JavaScript parser built in, in PHP as part of PHP code sniffer that allows you to apply those rules also to JavaScript code. So you can use that to um, enforce a coding standard, for instance, on JavaScript code. Um, I don't know about any, any specific static analysis tools um, for JavaScript, but I would assume that they exist, but probably have similar or even worse problems than the PHP tools, because JavaScript is also very dynamic, um, and you cannot figure out everything uh, statically, but I believe that there is at least some rudimentary tool that you can use. But I would probably put it also into Jenkins, probably not into the same job though. Because just because I want to test my, my PHP code shouldn't necessarily mean um, I also want to run my JavaScript unit tests. So I would, um, what I've done in the past is have one job um, in Jenkins that runs the PHP unit tests 
and then one job that runs the JavaScript unit tests, and when both are okay, um, run a different job that runs Selenium tests, for instance, because now you know the backend code works correctly as, as according to its unit tests, and the front end unit tests work correctly, and now you have to do the integration test. Any other questions? Or requests, wishes for things to look at, because this is as much as I have prepared a broad overview of all the things that there are. I, again, I had no, have no idea um, what your level of knowledge is with, with regard to PHP development and quality assurance tools and, and so on. So if you've never seen one of these tools in action, we could look at how to use PHP code sniffer or PHP depend or PHP mass detector and how to specify rules, configure rules, build your own rules. Depends on, on what you want to do. So the question is how um, do I do a continuous deployment uh, with Jenkins in a PHP environment? For instance, okay, yeah, okay. Um, at the end of the build, you build a package. And it depends on what kind of package you want to use. Uh, I've worked with teams um, that just build pair packages or FAR archives or build um, distribution packages like RPM if they're on, on uh, Red Hat or, or CentOS or uh, Debian packages or whatever. So, so there, there, were, there are a couple of questions in there that, and I try to repeat them all uh, while at the same time prioritizing them somehow. Um, so a question, one question in there was, um, do I think it's overkill to, uh, to create uh, Linux distribution based packages like RPMs or Debian packages or whatever. No, I don't think that's overkill. I think it's a really nice way of expressing all the dependencies of your application. So for instance, you can make a new release of your software um, and say, okay, if you want to install this, I need this version of PHP, I need this version of MySQL, I need this version of, of Memcached or whatever other system level components you have. And this, this is stuff that you cannot really um, express um, in, in, the, in a package XML for pair, for instance. Yes, you can express, I need PHP version 5.4.0, but if you want to install that um, using the pair and so on, you don't have that PHP version, it will just say, okay, I cannot install this because this dependency is not met. If you do this, with um, a system level package, like an RPM or a Debian package, and the dependency can be resolved, it will be resolved for you. You will get the new version of, newer version of PHP and so on. So that's really easy um, to unify all of the dependency management in, in, in one place. Which also makes it easy um, going one step further with, with regard to provisioning of new ma machines using chef or puppet, um, you just say, okay, I want to set up a new web server. And then your script knows, okay, web server means I need this distribution, I'm going to install that, and then I'm installing this list of packages, and oh, this application is supposed to be uh, installed there, so I install that package as well and pull in the, re the remaining um, dependencies. That is really powerful and not, um, it's, it's really a simple solution for a complex uh, problem. Uh, there are a lot of complicated solutions for that. Doing it manually would be the most complicated one I can think of. Um, but this makes it really easy and helps the, admi uh, the admins uh, stay sane. So no, I wouldn't say it's overkill to generate distribution packages. So the question is Selenium for front-end testing or You should have as few Selenium tests as you can get away with. Mm -hmm. The larger the test gets, uh, the less useful it becomes, the less valuable the information it pays you back with. A really large test can only tell you that something is broken. It doesn't really tell you where something is broken. That's what, why you want to have as, much, as many unit tests as possible. The test just one unit of code 
in isolation from all of the dependencies so that then when the test fails, you know exactly where something is broken. But yes, Selenium is very useful. Um, I don't know at the moment something that's better than Selenium at automating a browser and, sim and not simulating but triggering, triggering a, a real request that goes all the way um, to the server, does a real response and, and everything. Um, what I see more and more though is that uh, in addition to just using Selenium, which can, for the test can be used for instance also for um, compatibility testing um, with regard to different browser versions and browser vendors and so on, to also use something like Behat, which is inspired by Cucumber, um, to have higher level um, tests uh, that do something useful. So you can test on, on many different levels and have something that looks like natural language um, while still, um, let me see if I have something. Should have something in here. Just need to find it. Should be in here. Otherwise, I have it somewhere else. Yeah, so if, if you've never seen Behat or a, cu a cucumber which inspired it, this is basically the idea behind it. It allows you to write what they call a scenario, um, just plain text basically. Like given I have a fresh bank account, then the balance should be zero. Yes, this is behavior-driven development. Um, and then you can just run that and it says, okay, I found these two steps uh, in, in the document that you gave me, in the specification that you gave me. It runs the code and for each sentence that is executed and successful, you get the line highlighted in green. And of course, this does not work because there's a crystal ball and artificial intelligence behind the scenes that f just automatically figures out which portions of the code uh, to invoke and how to verify it by just looking at the natural language. Uh, you have to implement something called a behat context that acts as a mapper between the natural language and the code that is invoked. And there's something called Mink, which is a sister project to be had, which just gives you um, a default implementation of such a BHAT context for testing web applications. So this gives you a lot of commands like go to this URL, click here, click there, and verify that something is there and whatever. And it has at least um, three backends, like uh, Zombie.js, for instance, that simulate real browsers. Um, so you can do the web-based testing without having to use Selenium because Selenium tests are really, really slow and uh, expensive. And so this is much faster than running um, a Selenium test because you don't need to run, start the browser and interact with the browser and verify in the browser. It's just native HTTP calls that go on from within the PHP process. Any other questions? Then I think I'm done. I brought a couple of presents, gifts, whatever. I have four books um, to give away that are here and also have one elephant. Uh, if you don't know, the, 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 this elephant is the mascot of the PHP community. Actually a French guy designed them, a French comic artist started drawing comics around the PHP elephant a couple of years ago. And then a guy from Paris picked this idea up and found a company that makes cush, uh, custom plush toys and just gave them some of the comics and the drawings and they came up with this. Um, this is a small one, also the really big ones exist. Um, they're really nice and they are, I have one to give away, so. 
I think he should get one, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you.